Hi, I'm Ivan and I like to talk about computers. Recently, a friend of mine approached me and said with despair, I wish I could write more tests. The business sees adding tests as a cost and we, the developers, always have to choose new features over quality. In this video, I'd like to talk about tests, why we need them and how we can use them to build better software. And it all begins with money. Most stuff we see or use are things, and with things we have a clear process of making them happen. First we invest in designing a thing, then we build a version of it, and then we ship it to our customers. We can take that profit and invest it into designing the next version, or the next thing, but our product gets into the hands of our customers only after we've built the full version. With software though, we can do something different. We can adjust it over time. Therefore, instead of designing and building complete versions of products, we release one and continuously refine it, designing, building, and shipping. And we don't even have to build everything ourselves. Instead, we can offload some responsibilities to other programs so that we can ship our product faster. But our product will have to change over time. And it's usually for one of the three reasons. For one, as we iterate, we gain a new understanding of the world in which our product fits. We find out better what the world actually needs and have to adjust our product to conform to that. Secondly, it's also possible that something in the world has changed independently of us. For example, one of our dependencies has updated and is broken. We probably need to revise the way we interact with that dependency. And finally, well, let's face it, we don't always build flawless software. We built a thing, but it turns out that in the real world, with real users, well, they can find ways to break it that we've never thought of. So there are going to be bugs that need some fixing. But at the end of the day, we want to provide value for our users through our products. For that, it's important for us to be able to adapt quickly at a low cost. Well, that sounds good, but how do we do that? You can argue that if you can notice it quicker, you can probably fix it quicker, which makes a smaller delay and is cheaper. So in order to be able to adapt quickly, you need to be able to detect the need for change as quickly as possible. Cool. If we follow that train of thought, there are several ways we can detect the need for change. For example, we can have a direct line to the customer so that they can submit feedback or to get an even shorter delay. We can introduce quality assurance in the process so that misunderstandings are detected faster. Or we can get this process even closer to the developer by asking them to write tests for their code. And now, for a minute, let's put everything aside and talk about what is a test. So let's say we want to have user objects that have a first name and a last name. In order to get it behaviors, we'll create a user class with a simple constructor that accepts the first and the last name. And then we'd be able to use this new class to create objects. But in our app, we don't usually use the names separately. So we'd like to write a method that returns the full name and use this throughout our code base. We can write a quick one and return a string with the first name and the last name separated by a space. Nothing fancy. But now we're not sure it works unless we run the whole app and check a couple of cases. Well, we can solve this by writing a test for this new method. The test can be a simple function that creates a user with a specific first name and the last name and checks if the full name is what we expected and if it isn't, then it throws an error. That's kind of it. Uh, when we change the implementation, calling our test function will throw the error and we will know it before we release our code to the users. We can slightly improve this by using a test runner, which runs all of our tests, collects the error messages and shows us a summary of how they ran. We can also use proper assertions, but again, this is good enough for the video. Because most importantly, we are able to easily detect in an automated way that we need to change things. So getting back to us shipping products. You can see how we can reduce the risk of shipping a buggy product by asking the developer to write tests before releasing a feature. So that our cycle is now changed to design, build, test, and ship. But then, Someone in a suit comes along and they notice that we don't really change the product after we test it. But we spend time writing tests that don't really provide clear value to the users. And this is exactly what my friend was complaining about. She feels uncomfortable that her team would rather invest in building new features than ensure the quality of the work that's already done by writing tests. And to be honest, I don't think that's what quality is. 
In most cases, adding tests after we build the product doesn't change the product, so it doesn't add anything to the quality of the thing we already built. Yes, it stops a bad product from getting shipped, but it doesn't help us build things faster or better. And most importantly, it doesn't help us adapt to change. And to bring in a metaphor, adding tests after we build the feature is similar to adding duct tape at the end of an assembly line. The product will not be visibly broken, we'll get fewer frustrated users, but it won't help us ship our product faster. Your tests shouldn't be duct tape. Used properly, tests are a different kind of tape. You can try a different strategy now and write the tests before you write the actual code. Here's an example of what I mean. Let's say that our user class has only the first name and the last name properties and we would like to build the full name feature. We can start by expressing this goal as a test. Just as before, we define the expected behavior by creating a user with a specific first and last name and set up an expectation on their full name. If we run this test, it fails. We didn't write a full name function yet. But now we can write our code against this test with our goal being just to make the test pass. And as soon as we're done, we can look around and we can think if we've reached our goal. For example, we can ask ourselves, what if a person doesn't have a last name? Does that happen in our database? Yeah. What will we show then as a full name? Good, our goals have changed. We can express that new goal as another test. For example, we will create a user that is initialized with only the first name. And when we call full name, we expect to see the first name without any spaces. And when we run the test, it will fail since we have interpolated our full name with a space. However, we can now extend our existing features without breaking any of the expectations that are already there. And most importantly, we know when we're done. So the main difference is that we didn't build the full feature at once. Instead, we split the feature into two simple specifications and express them as tests. Then we wrote the code that satisfies those expectations as simply as possible. We ran the test suite as a tool to check whether we're done. And then, when it's all green, we can claim that our feature is done. But in this case, the tests are not duct tape. They're measuring tape. You'd be surprised how this simple shift in perspective can change things. In a talk called Agile is Dead, Dave Thomas spoke about his four-step Agile process. Steps are, first of all, understand where you are. The second step is take a small step towards where you want to be. And at the end of that step, evaluate what happened. That's all there is to it. And then repeat. As we do this, as we take these tiny steps, we will be able to reevaluate our understanding of the world to see how the changes in the world affect the functionality of our product and, yes, produce fewer bugs. In the end, this is how we can adapt quickly, deliver more value to our users without a significant upfront cost. We just have to start taking a measurement before we do things. There's one more thing, though. You might have seen craftspeople doing the same kind of work for a long time and being good at it, and how at some point some of their habits become automatic. Like a tailor is able to see that the clothes won't fit just by looking at the blueprint. Here's another snippet from the same Dave Thomas talk. I say, I don't do tests, you know. Uh, and the reason is that for me, the benefit of tests comes from the design aspects. The fact that it helps me understand the design of my code. It helps me design interfaces for my code, APIs for my code. It helps me decouple my code. And I've been doing it for so long that now I think about that as I'm coding and the test doesn't have to exist. It still drives the design. And I've done measurements. I don't actually have any more bugs. I will still test complex algorithms, but I won't test the whole piece. So next time when you start building something, if you're not doing that already, try to write the tests beforehand. And next time someone argues that writing tests first is a cost that they want to exclude, see if it helps you to think in these terms. Would you like your product to be covered in duct tape? Or would you like to measure before you cut?